Hey guys, so I wore a rare beauty lipstick the other day and it gave me like really awesome 90s vibes. Uh, and then I was in the car listening to a supermodel new song that came out and it says she's a 90s supermodel. I don't know. So I was just inspired to do a 90s look because two things were telling me at once. So we're gonna do a full lip try on of all the shades I have of Rare Beauty's lipsticks and lip liners and then uh, do a 90s eye look inspired by How Do You Know, who is a creator on Instagram and I'm gonna put her link below so you can check her out because I thought this look was so cool. It's a lot like, you know, the 90s got a modern twist on it. So I thought we'd recreate that and do a fun 90s look and try on some lipsticks. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so below and let's get started. For primer, I'm gonna start with the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. I haven't used this but one time, so I don't know how I feel about it yet. I definitely like that it's not super uh, silicone feely, that's a word. I like that it doesn't feel extremely like silicone. It's more hydrating than some of the mattifying primers that I have. I got a new shade in the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Foundation. So I thought we could try this because it's definitely very matte and the shade I had before was extremely light. <laughs> I think it's still gonna be light, but not quite as bad as before. The old shade that I had was 110 Ivory C, and it's just a little bit too light. And then I bought 210 Buff N. So I'll show you the difference. Here is the old shade and here is the new shade. I actually think the new shade is a little too neutral or yellow toned and the other one is more pink. So maybe we'll actually we'll just mix the two. All right, I'm gonna mix the two shades together. Not that it matters because I'm not going anywhere, but the wear time is really good. <laughs> Actually, I think mixing the two is probably the perfect shade for me. One by itself would be too light and one would be too dark. I have this problem with a lot of foundations. I'm somewhere in between a fair shade and the light shade, uh, more of like a fair light combo at the moment. That's why the new Lancome uh, Tinty Doll, the more glowy one has a perfect shade match for me, which is 220C. It's pretty close. It's barely a little bit darker than my skin, but since it's not full matte coverage, I can get away with it being a tiny bit darker. I think it's really <laughs> like probably one of the closer matches that I have for foundation. Uh, so I really like that new shade. And then I'll stick to mixing these two with the other foundation. I also have the Lancome Concealer in the shade 90. It's whatever the lightest shade is. I previously had 110 in the concealer and it's dark. <laughs> like it could be a good foundation shade, but not for under eye brightening. I really like this concealer. I've been using it for about six months off and on. I think it does a really good job of self-setting and not creasing. And the coverage is obviously great to cover up my dark circles since I never sleep. See, now I look like I didn't stay up till 3 a.m. playing Destiny. <laughs> Normally I'd put concealer right here, but I really don't think it needs it with the coverage that this foundation gives. So I'm just gonna leave it alone and move on to contour. I'm gonna use the M Cosmetics So Soft Terra Sculpt Stick. I saw a TikTok with a filter for how to contour for your face shape, and uh, I thought that was really cool, so I started doing it, and I think it looks really fun and different for me, so that's how I'm gonna to contour today. Basically, I take it from just below the cheekbone 
in a thicker line, stop about halfway down, then give a tiny line down to there, and another small line just underneath the cheek. So you can see it's just kind of pulling where my facial structure would already have hollows. And then underneath the chin and up by the temples. I don't usually do my nose, but I will today for fun. I find everything hard to blend out on my nose, um, including foundation and concealer. So I typically skip nose contour. Um, not that my nose doesn't need it, but <laughs> I'm just gonna blend that out with a beauty blender. Trying to lift up as much as possible so that I'm not dragging that contour down further because it's already as far as I would like it to be. This M Cosmetics stick is my absolute favorite contour stick I've ever had. It is so creamy. Uh, it lasts all day. I don't have to fuss with it. It's the perfect size and shape for me. I think it's just wonderful. Um, I love how creamy it is. I find some contour sticks to be a bit stiff. I don't need to warm this one up. I can just go straight in, which I really like. Yeah, the color's perfect too. I have so much trouble finding the right contour shade because some of them are really gray and some of them are just way too warm. Uh, this is perfect for me. I've always been into contouring since the first time I bought like one of those contour kits. I wasn't a big fan of the Anastasia one, but I had one from Smashbox that had cream and powder in it and I used the absolute shit out of it. <laughs> I mean, I used I used up an entire palette and had to buy a new one and then I used most of that up. Uh, I was obsessed with contouring back in, oh my gosh, when was that? 2016, 2017? I didn't use any blush <laughs> and um, just contoured. And I actually thought it looked pretty good. <laughs> It was definitely a look. Um, I wish now that I had incorporated blush more into my routine back then, but I'm making up for it now. <laughs> All right, so that's how the contour looks blended out. I usually just leave it at this for a typical day to day. I don't always go in with a cream bronzer. I'll maybe do another powder bronzer on top or something, but I usually don't do a cream bronzer also. I'll usually pick the contour or the bronzer stick to start. But I want a little bit more definition today because I want a really sculpted look. I'm gonna take the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in Light Medium and just hit right here and over here and then a bit down the neck. I'm just gonna dip my sponge straight in because this is my makeup and I don't use it on other clients. I'm not using a lot of this. I just think that the blurring properties in this are really awesome. The way that it blurs the skin is really incredible and that's just what I want on the outer portions of the face. See, it's not too much. I think it's really pretty. I've been using the Skin Enhancer since it came out and I'm obsessed with it. I went out one day using the Skin Enhancer and the Skin Perfector together. Uh, and I have this one in light and this one in light medium. And I've never gotten so many compliments on my skin. So I have not stopped using it since. My dog is barking at nothing, as usual. All right, I'm obsessed with the skin. It's matte, but the 
outside looks just glowy enough. The foundation's really nice. Okay, so I know I want to do a smoky eye later. The question is what liquid blush do I use? I've been thinking about using this Pat McGrath blush with this look, but I think it's gonna lean too warm. But like how stunning is that? No, I might still do it. I think it'll warm the look up a bit. So as a base, as a base, I either wanna use the Fenty Cream Blush in Rose Latte or Rare Beauty Hope. I'm leaning towards this. I haven't used the shade before, but I've used the Fenty Cream blushes before and they're lovely and I love the colors. They are so fun and different. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. It might be a tad warm, but it's so hard to match every cool toned look on the eyes with a purple blush, you know what I mean? And I do it a lot, <laughs> but it's kind of fun to mix and match tones a little bit uh, to warm up or cool down different looks. I think that can be kind of fun. Moving on to brows, I'm not gonna do full 90s brows, but I'll try to keep them a bit thinner than I normally would. So we stay on theme. I'm gonna take the NYX Thick It Stick It which is my favorite brow gel at the moment. Uh, although I hate the applicator in every single way, the product is awesome. <laughs> the applicator gets really like gloopy and there's way too much product on the brush. Even if I like wipe all the product off, which is what I'm doing right now, I still feel like it's way too much on the brush itself. I actually like to take my e.l.f. brush, wherever that is, and put some on the back of my hand and then dip into that and then go back into the brows, which is really what I wanna do. It's so much more work. All right, so I'm taking this little brow lift, what's it called? Brush? Brow spoolie brow lift brush thing, and I'm gonna dip that into the product so that there's not too much product on the brush. And then we're gonna go into the brows floof them up just a little in the front and keep the hold on the side. Perfect. Now I'm going to start on the eyes. This is the look that we're going to be recreating today. I think it's super stunning and all shimmery kind of gives those blue gray vibes that a lot of 90s looks have, uh, more cool toned. So I can either use the Natasha Denona Glam Palette, which kind of honestly leans a bit warm in my opinion, or we could try this NYX Smoky Fume Palette that I can't open. Oh my goodness. Who packaged this? Of course it doesn't rip off even. Why would that? Why would it work out for me? It's as good as it's gonna get. She used some bodyography glitter pigments, which I have. Be right back. Okay, I got the glitter pigments in blue morpho. Which sounds dirty. I don't know why, I have no reason. And I also have the shade Soiree which is exactly what I wore the other night when I did that Rare Beauty lipstick look that I loved so much. So let's, let's use these. I'm gonna prime the lids with the About Face Shadow Fix. So I really want it to be a nice, stickier, smooth base for these shadows to sit on top of. And also my eyes crease so bad. My hooded eyes require 
either a concealer that's set or a shadow primer that's set. So I think this will need a base. Let's check it out. Well, maybe not. So there's with the NYX shadow underneath and there's it by itself. I'm actually leaning towards what it looks like by itself. So I think we just go for it. All right, so I'm gonna take that pretty bodyography glitter pigment and soiree all over the lid. Right up to where the crease is. And I'm just gonna do that with my finger. I'm gonna blend the edges out with a brush in a minute so I'm not super concerned about precision. I'm going to use a very stained Smith 230 brush. And just flick out the edge and blend into the crease. I have no shadow on this brush. Okay, now taking this little e.l.f. smudge brush I'm gonna grab this shade from the e.l.f. palette and then smoke out the outer V. <laughs> oh, there's fallout. No! I'm gonna run that underneath the eye and connect it straight outward. and then connect it to the outer V. Running only a bit through the crease when I know there's like no product left, just to get the shape. I'm gonna pick a bit more of that up. And just fill that in a little bit. I just smeared myself. So to fix that, <laughs> I'm gonna dot a little bit of concealer and just clean up that edge. I'm gonna take some setting powder. Which one do I have with me? I have the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Clarifying Finishing Powder. Look at me hitting pan. I'm so proud of myself. And I'm just gonna stipple it under the eye. I don't want to swipe it because I find that swiping it can take up your concealer and leave some stroke marks. While I'm here, I'm also gonna set my nose and my chin. This foundation does a good job of locking itself down, uh, but my skin is really oily, so I need all the help I can get. I'm not going to powder under this eye yet because I want to make sure I don't make the same mistake twice <laughs> and need to clean it up. I'm gonna take some of that setting powder and just dip my clean brush into it. And then I'm gonna hit under the brow bone and blend into that eyeshadow. Okay, now I'm gonna grab that blue Morpho shade, this one right here, and I'm gonna hit the inner corner with that. Now that that has its own little moment, I'm gonna take a bit more and I'm gonna start blending it into the inner portion of the eye. Just like that. Bringing that a bit higher and kind of swiping it through the crease. All 
All right, now I'm starting to get 90s vibes instead of just smoky eye. I really like these Bodyography glitter pigments. They remind me a lot of the Hourglass Scattered Light. Uh, the, the consistency, the texture, the packaging even. They have a ton of colors too and more fun colors like this blue shade. Uh, and they have a purple that's really cool. I've just been having a lot of fun with these. They're soft to the touch, like if you push down too hard you'll leave an imprint. Um, and they can flake if you like try to pull it out, but just, you know, tap in it lightly. And then just pat on the eye with a finger and they look so beautiful. I mean, as you can tell, they're really sparkly and glimmery. I'm really obsessed with the blue shade. I've been using it a lot. It looks so pretty over different colors, like here over the gray, and then I've used it over purples before. It's really pretty. Now that I've got that done, let's add the cute little crease detail. I'm gonna use this Glisten Cosmetic Split Liner in the shade Mondays. It has a fun gray-blue shade, a darker and a lighter one. I'm gonna use the lighter side. Taking this Glisten Cosmetics Fairy Freak brush, dipping into a bit of water, and then going into the light shade. Now with the darker shade in the split liner, I'm gonna fill in the front. And then blend them in together. Now I'm going to do the other side and I'll be right back. While I was doing the liner on this eye, I decided I wanted it to be all one color, so I just filled it in with the darker of the two shades um, because it was reading too light to me. And so now I'm going to darken the inner part with this purpley shade from the NYX palette right on top of that liner. Okay, that's more of the effect I was looking for. Okay, so next I'm going to put on mascara. I'm gonna use the Ilia Limitless, one of my favorites. Ilia makes the best mascaras of all time. I haven't stopped using them since I discovered them. Both of them are great, but if you haven't used either before, I would recommend the Limitless. Just because it's got a really special wand where you have straighter bristles and more dense bristles on one side, and then uh, the other side is more thickening. So what I like to do is use the thickening side first and then go in with the finer side to get the clumps out. This mascara does not flake. It does not go anywhere. I'm extremely impressed. 
I mean, there's no denying how awesome that looks. Night and day. <laughs> I wonder what the blue Make it by Mario liner would look like underneath. I'm gonna do it. I'm just putting that in the water line. I think that definitely made it smoke here. I'm into it. Yeah. I like that. Oh my gosh. I just really love this look. There's something about cool tones that just make my hair look really silver and cute, so I really like them for that. I just am obsessed with blue eyeshadow, <laughs> and any excuse to put on blue eyeshadow is great for me. <laughs> all right, lips. So I'm gonna swatch all the Rare Beauty shades. The shades I have are Fun, lively, bold, wise, and gifted. I like and dislike this lipstick packaging. What I really like about it is that it doesn't roll off the table and it'll stay still because of the shape. What I dislike about it is that it has come out in my purse about five times. So I guess I'm like hitting my purse against something that makes this pop out. Uh, it's pretty easy to to do like it doesn't take much pressure so um, I don't like that part so I just have to be a little bit more careful with it but love that it doesn't roll off the table because I am very clumsy <laughs> and drop things often these rare beauty lipsticks are really awesome they stay on they feel soft they are definitely matte uh, and they but they don't feel very drying they're much more comfortable than like the Makeup by Mario matte lipsticks, which I'm obsessed with the colors from that line, but they are a bit dry. These are much more comfortable, kind of like their matte lip creams, but not quite as creamy as those liquid lips. But these stay on, and I've had dinner with these on before, and they do a very good job of holding up. All right, that's the shade Fun. I originally didn't pick up the shade Fun, and then I saw Soph put on the shade Fun, and it looked so good on her that I bought it. <laughs> Lively is a bit lighter than Fun, and a little bit more pink. This is the shade Lively. My lips are pretty naturally pigmented, so I don't always go for the very lighter shades in a collection because it looks awkward it looks like I, I don't i don't even know how to describe it. it looks like concealer lips on me it just looks odd maybe it's because i'm not used to seeing myself like that but i don't like when you put on a light lipstick and then you see this color poking through to me it just looks really odd so I typically stick to darker shades, which is more fun anyway, so. <laughs> I'd say bold's my favorite like almost everyday shade for me, even though it's a bit darker. And then my favorite fun shade is gifted, which is what we'll be ending with today. Now here's the shade bold. This is the first one that caught my eye because it is so stunning. Like, come on. So this is the shade Bold. Taking this off feels like a crime. Next I have the shade Wise. I actually haven't used this one yet, but it looks really pretty. And here's the shade Wise. This is going to be a fun fall lip. I'm so ready for fall lipsticks. You have no idea. It's the best time of year. There is no better time. You can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> Dark lips are so up my alley and any excuse to wear more of them than I already do is awesome. Very exciting. I definitely want to do my favorite fall lipsticks soon. 
because it's almost fall and that's terrifying. What happened to summer? Did I miss all of it? Because I haven't been here for it? I mean, where, where was I? This is cute. Honestly, I could leave it like this, but I really want to try on the last lip color because I think it's going to pull in some more of those bluish purpley kind of vibes. The last shade is Gifted and it's Selena Gomez's favorite shade and I know why <laughs> because it's freaking stunning. Here's where we're going to go full overline. <laughs> Bear with me. Here's the look all finished. I'm completely obsessed with this lip color. It will be another go-to fall shade. I think this look is really fun. Gives 90s vibes. Thank you guys for watching me do this fun 90s inspired look today. I think it's so cute and I'm really happy that I did this. I'm gonna be feeling all the fun vibes all day so yeah let me know what video you want to see next in the comments below and please subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye